Kadosh, Kadosh, Kadosh. Do you really understand what that means, Kadosh, holy? It means to be separate, to be above, to be other, to be other. So when the angels cry, holy, 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 they're not just saying, good job, God, you never sinned. Good job, God, you never sinned. They're saying of all the worlds created and yet to be created, you're above, you're beyond, you're other. See, when God said, let there be light, and started creating, from that moment, He hasn't stopped creating. So there's worlds being created as we speak. And out of all those worlds, you're other, holy. And when we come before Him, what are we but a speck of dust? And the pride of man wants to elevate himself. The pride of man wants to elevate himself. God, holy, do we really understand? But let's pray. Grace Heavenly Father, we thank You and we praise You. Father, we just come before You, Father, and I ask that You just give us a humble heart. Father, we always cry for blessing, Father, but, but Father, crush us like the dust of the earth that nothing is above us. We're not first. You're first. We're not even second, Father, but we're third because You said others come before us. So we are third. But Father, I ask You that You crush our hearts and crush our spirits, Father, that we may receive You and see You for who You truly are and who You want to reveal to us, Father, that we may not even be as the sands of the sea, but that your Son, Yeshua, is exalted through us. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. How many of you hear that prayer? Crush me. Crush me. No, bless me. Bless me. Bless me. But who? Christ, crush me. That my Savior, Yeshua, may be exonerated in me. The pride of man's heart. The pride of man's hearts is always about our flesh. We want our spirit to rise and soar. But will you humble yourself before God? Amos chapter 9. It says, I, the sovereign Lord, am watching the sinful nation of Israel. I will destroy it from the face of the earth, but I will completely destroy the family of Israel. It says the Lord, for I will give the command and will shake Israel along with the other nations. As grain is shaken in a sieve, yet not one true kernel will be lost. But all the sinners will die by the sword. Does it say all the sinners who will die by the sword except those who believe in Yeshua? It doesn't say that. It says all the sinners will die by the sword. All those who say nothing bad will happen to us. Nothing bad will happen to us. Nothing bad... What do we say? Nothing bad will happen to us. We get a free ticket out of here. We're better than Israel. Poof, I'll fly away. Does it say that? No. It says He is warning those who say nothing bad will happen to us. But see, we always like the next part. In that day I will restore the fallen house of David. I will repair its damaged walls. And we want to talk about sowing and reaping and how the harvester overtakes the planter. That's not what it says here. Before. What, what's the verse before that? All the sinners will die by the sword. But He's going to leave a remnant. A remnant. This is the Bible. No interpretation. I just read it. Let's go to... We're going to get to the good stuff here in a little bit. Deuteronomy chapter 12. Of course, the title of my message is Heaven on Earth, the Moedim. But do we really know what the Moedim is? See, we've never been taught about the Moedim. We think, God, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when did God change? When did God change? In, in Devarim or Deuteronomy chapter 12, 
It says, when the Lord your God goes ahead of you and destroys the nations and you drive them out and live in their land, do not fall into the trap of following their customs and worshiping their gods. Do not inquire about their gods, saying, how do these nations worship their gods? I want to follow their example. You must not worship the Lord your God the way other nations worship their gods. For they perform for their gods every detestable act that the Lord hates. They even burn their sons and daughters as sacrifices to their gods. So be careful to obey all the commands I give you. You must not add anything to them or subtract anything from them. What does it say? He said, do not worship me the way. And do not even inquire about how they worship their gods. God has given us set times in a set way to worship Him. And it's in the Moedim. It's in the Moedim. And anything else is an abomination. If you worship God with a Christmas tree in your house, He said it's an abomination. If you want to hunt Easter eggs and honor Ishtar, the Queen of Heaven, that's another God. It's an abomination. Do you want to get real? Let's step on some toes. Because I know these guys can handle it. So put on your steel toes, because let's get real. I mean, these aren't the times. You want a prophetic word? No, you don't. Trust me, you do not want the word of a true prophet. Because it isn't, oh, come on, brother. Be strong, be courageous. No, it's repent. Repent. A holy God. It's repent. Get your life together. Turn back to God. And we just had this return two weeks ago. And people were gathering, return, 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 return. Return to what? You want America to be like it was before? Before COVID? Maybe 50 years ago. Return to God. Return to godliness. But how fake was that godliness? If you don't even know His commands. Because He says, if you love Me, keep My commandments. Who is the lukewarm church? Who is the lukewarm church? It's like, okay, here's the lukewarm church. I'm not lukewarm. I'm preaching. I'm singing. I'm praising. I'm worshiping. I'm witnessing. Are you lukewarm? How do you know you're lukewarm? He said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Do I wear my ZZ on Friday, but not on Sunday through Friday? Do I? Are you lukewarm? Oh, I'll do it to be accepted in this group, but I won't do it so I can be accepted in this group. Are you going to be set apart and holy? Oh, I won't eat pork this week, but when I go to Christmas with my family, let's have a ham sandwich so we don't offend them. Let's talk about the Moedim, the way God called us to worship Him. See, we've never heard these because it's been robbed from you. It's been robbed from you. Vaikra, Leviticus, chapter 23. How many Moedim are there? You want to know how to worship God? This is how we worship God. And this is a blessing to us. A blessing. It says, Adonai said to Moshe, Tell the people of Israel the designated times of Adonai, that appointed time, that Moedim, which you are to proclaim as a holy convocation, are my designated times. Work is to be done on six times, but the seventh day is a Shabbat of complete rest, a holy convocation. You are not to do any kind of work. It is a Shabbat for Adonai, even in your homes. These are the designated times of Adonai. The holy convocations you are to proclaim at their designated times. Shabbat. The first Moedim. Shabbat. See these zitzits? It says, the children of Israel, you shall wear on the, corner, the fringe, on the corners of your garments, with blue thread. But it doesn't say for Jewish men. It says the children of Israel. It says, and it says, and he says, he says, so you may remember my commandments, so your mind don't go a whoring like it wants to. This is the word. You want to hear 
Renew your mind, renew your mind. Where's Zit Zit? Because the Zit Zit is not a sign of the covenant. It's not a wedding ring. It doesn't show me anybody that I'm a believer, according to the Word. What's the sign of the covenant between me and them? This is the sign of the covenant between me and them, that they keep my Shabbats. You want to say you believe in Yeshua and you want to keep His commands and you love Him, but you don't keep Shabbat? Or maybe we're lukewarm. Oh, well, i got to work. Does, that, does God say, oh, I understand you have to work, so it's okay to break my command. It doesn't say that. But who here in faith can say, if I have to work on Shabbat, no thank you. God will provide for me for being obedient. Or, oh, Let's go witness. It doesn't say that. Let's go witness on Shabbat because we're doing the Lord's work. It doesn't say that. It says do no work because this is a sign between me and them. How many of us honor Him with our lips but our heart is far from Him? You speak the lingo, but yet, wait a minute. You don't keep Shabbat. Are you holy? Are you set apart? It's going to get better. In the first month, on the 14th day of the month, between sundown and complete darkness comes Pesach for Adonai. On the 15th day of the same month is the festival of matzah. For seven days you are to eat matzah. On the first day you are to have a holy convocation. Don't do any kind of ordinary work. Bring an offering by fire to Adonai for seven days. On the seventh day, it is a holy convocation. Do not do any kind of ordinary work. And I think most of us have been through a Passover Seder. It's about the kingdom of heaven. It's about Yeshua giving up His life as the Passover lamb. This is a taste of eternity that we get to experience here on this earth. Just like Shabbat. You want to know what heaven's like? Keep Shabbat. He's giving you a taste of what it's going to be like. Adonai says to Moshe, Tell the people of Israel, After you enter the land I am giving you in the harvest, you are to bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priests. The Feast of Unleavened Bread. What does it teach us? What does it teach us? We want to think, oh, well, let's just get rid of all the matzah out of our house. But what does it teach you? How lukewarm are you? Oh, let's not take the leaven out. Let's just go put it in the shop. So, Or later, so when Shabbat's over, we can just bring it back. No, he says, get it off your property. He said, I don't want to see no leaven. So what does unleavened bread do? It makes us search ourselves for the leaven in us. Are you just going to set it aside? until after Shabbat and then go get it back? Do we honor Him with our lips and our heart is far from Him? See what's been robbed from us? See what's been robbed? See, nobody wants to teach this because nobody likes it. Because a true prophet, you really want a true, to be a prophet? Maybe you need to read Deuteronomy 13 and Jeremiah 23. Thus saith the Lord, it should scare you so much. Thus saith the Lord, it should never come out of your path. And, and God allows it. He allows it. Do you know why? He's testing you to see if you love Him with all your heart and all your soul and all your mind. See, prophecy is speaking the things of God. See, right now is the first of the year. I don't see any prophet saying, hey brother, the Lord just told me He's going to restore you this year. You might hear that January 2nd. But we're on God's time. This is the first of His year. So you don't hear that prophecy on December 25th. But if it is not in this Word, if it is not in this Bible, it's not from the Lord. You think, you think a prophet needs to add to His Word? Do we take this seriously? Do we take this seriously? And He's testing you to see if you love Him with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. 
Now, I know this seems harsh, but the return. Went to Washington, D.C. Everybody come and repented. What did they repent of? What was the next day? Atonement. The Day of Atonement. Did those people turn around and observe the Day of Atonement? Was that true repentance? Was it true repentance? Because this is in my spirit. This is what I want to know. Were they honoring Him with their lips and their heart far from Him? The next day was the Day of Atonement. And so we go through the Moedim. We go through Pesach, unleavened bread, first fruits, the Omer. Then we come to Shavuot. Shavuot. The day of Pentecost. The day of Pentecost. What was it about? Say, we don't know. It's not about the barley harvest. Yeah, it is. But what happened at Pentecost? The Pentecost was my, I don't know, kind of a toss up between my favorite Pentecost and Sukkot here. (laughs) But Pentecost, what happened at Mount Sinai? That God Himself spoke to the children of Israel. But did you know it wasn't just the children of Israel? It wasn't just the Hebrews. There was people from 70 nations that went out with them. They're called the mixed multitude. And what did He do? He spoke to them. He gave them the Torah word for word with thunderings and lightnings. And He spoke to them, will you accept My covenant? And this is the covenant. This is what... This is. Here's the rules, boys. And He spoke to them each in their own language. Spoke to them each in their own language. Does that sound familiar? What about the day of Pentecost? When He comes tongues of fire. And they spoke in different tongues. This is Pentecost. This was the new covenant. Or the renewed covenant. And what did He do at Mount Sinai? You see, now we say... The new covenant. What's the new covenant? He said, in that day, I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. Not like I made with their fathers, but I will put my spirit within them. And they will keep my judgments, my statutes, and my Torah. So Pentecost, that should be the greatest day. If you say, the Holy Spirit... I have the Holy Spirit living in me. You should have a desire. You shouldn't have, you should, according to the word. He says, You will keep my Torah. If you claim to have the Holy Spirit, you may have a spirit, but what spirit do you have? Does it cause you to keep the laws, his mitzvah, his judgments, and his statutes? This is the Bible. This is the Bible. Shavuot. It's that conviction. I was wrong. But Shavuot, it wasn't just a new thing. Why did, why did Yeshua tell His disciples to wait until the Holy Spirit comes? He told them to wait until Shavuot. Wait until Shavuot. I love Shavuot. And the barley, the first resurrection... And the wheat, the second resurrection, the Shavuot, when He gives the covenant in our hearts. It's the first resurrection and the second one, together, working together, being one loaf out of the two. This is Shavuot. But see how we, how we want to think, oh, it's about us. It's about my flesh. It's about me being blessed. This is what it's about, folks. It's not about us. It's about Him. And when we honor these days, when we honor His commandments, He is showing us who He is. He's showing us who He is. And He's given us a taste of eternity of what it's like when we're going to be with Him forever. So now we come from Shavuot. What's the next? Moedim. Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. The Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement. 
Do you really know what atonement is? Do we really know what Yeshua did for our atonement? Do we really know what He did? Do we know what happens on the Day of Atonement? Say we sing songs, I enter the Holy of Holies, I enter through the blood of the Lamb. That's an awesome song. But is it biblical? Do you really know what happened on the Day of Atonement? The Day of Atonement is when the High Priest, Yeshua, puts on the linen garments. He don't go in as the high priest with the garb and the... He, he humbles Himself with those robes of righteousness and He goes before the Father. He goes before the Father because the Bible says He lives and makes intercession for us. The Day of Atonement is Yeshua going into the Holy of Holies. And when I say, I entered the Holy of Holies, what am I saying? Do you really know what we're saying? We're saying, Yeshua, the atonement you're making ain't good enough. I can make atonement for myself. I'm going to go before the presence of God myself. It's serious business. It's serious. Who are we to think that we could go before a holy God and make intercession ourselves? by going into that Holy of Holies. But yet, we see Yeshua, the High Priest, going and making atonement for us. And then He shows us His love and His mercy and His graciousness of the sin that we should die. And He is the High Priest that makes intercession for us. And... It, and, and Right here, it says, and if you don't do this every year, it's a permanent statue, you will be cut off from my people. You will be cut off from my people. You have no part in this if you don't do this. God does not mess around, folks. He don't mess around. And the day is coming that He ain't going to be a lamb. He's coming as a lion. And it says He's coming as a lion and His garments are dipped in blood. The blood of His own enemies. And He is coming back to destroy and to damn. But it says, old man teach younger men to be serious about the Word. We want to joke and have fun and make light of it? What did God say? What does the Word say? He says, older men, teach younger men to be sober, to be vigilant, to be serious. And when we speak the things of God, we're speaking salvation to them. And that is serious business because now the Lord has put their eternity into your hands. The Day of Atonement, Yom Kippur. Adonai said to Moshe, the tenth day of the seventh month is Yom Kippur. You are to have a holy convocation. You are to deny yourselves and you are to bring an offering made by fire to Adonai. You are not to do any kind of work on that day because it is Yom Kippur to make atonement for you before Adonai your God. Anyone who does not deny himself on that day is to be cut off from his people. Yom Kippur. Then we come to Yom Teruah. Yom Teruah. The day of the awakening. The day of the blast. The day of the blast. He's coming back. He's coming back. He's coming back. The joyful noise of the shofar. Are you ready? Are we ready? Then, the day of the trumpets. The day of trumpets. And then what do we have after that? Atonement. We we'll see how it goes. The trumpets, you're called, and then atonement. Do you ever wonder when he says, I'll separate the sheep from the goats? 
He said, I'll separate the sheep from the goats. What day is it? That's on the Day of Atonement. When you're judged for every thought, word, and deed. Are you found worthy? Are we found worthy? Now, I'm not talking salvation by works. But even in Ezekiel, he says that he scatters his people. Because they say, the people of the Lord, the people of the Lord. And by saying, we are the people of the Lord, we profane His holy name. When we don't live according to this law. Are we serious about what the things of the Lord are? So now... Sukkot. Sukkot, the Feast of Rejoicing, the Feast of Tabernacles, when God Himself comes and tabernacles with men. Say, but this wasn't the first Sukkot. When was the first Sukkot? In the Garden of Eden. When He Sukkoted with Adam. He Sukkoted with Adam. When God was with men. And this is God's heart, His plan is to always be with His people. And when we celebrate Sukkot, it's God is with us. We're rejoicing. Because a few days earlier, He atoned for us. And we're washed clean. And now we can rejoice. So think about that day when He comes back. That trumpet blows. And then we stand before Him. He says, sheep, goat, sheep, goat, sheep, goat. See, Matthew chapter 7, it says, Matthew chapter 7, He says, in that day, they will say to Me, Lord, Lord. But see, the Scripture says, no man can call Me Lord except by the Father or except by the Spirit. So here these, here's these people adamantly, Lord, Lord, did we not do this? And he'll say, depart from me, you worker of lawlessness. Lawlessness. What is lawlessness? Depart from me, those who don't follow my Torah, who don't follow my laws, my judgments, and my statutes. But see how gracious and merciful and loving he is towards us. He is an awesome God. And he has given us the right to be called sons and daughters of the Most High. And this is what Yeshua did for us, that we may be partakers of that covenant. That we may be partakers of that covenant. That now He set His Spirit within us. Now we get to be and walk as He walked. And this is the whole purpose of the Moedim, to teach us the nature of in the ways of Yehovah, the Creator of this heaven and earth, the Creator of us. And so we get to know intimately. But how can we know intimately if we don't be intimate with Him? You see, the Moedim, the Moedim it's not just a festival or a commandment. The Moedim is... Like a date. Some of us are married. Have, have, when you were dating, it says, okay, this is the day I'm going to be here. Let's go spend some time together. And then guess what? You don't show up. Okay, so let's have another date where I, I'll be there and I'll be intimate with you and we can get to know each other. He says, this is the day I'm going to be there. Well, too busy. I didn't show up for that one either. What about weekly Shabbat? This is my day that I'm going to be intimate with you and show you the things of the kingdom. Oh, well, guess what? I was too busy. You didn't show up. Are we lukewarm? Do we look at ourselves in our lives and say, I'm lukewarm. Have I repented? 
God, I don't want nothing in this world. I don't want it to be like it was. I don't want America to be like it was five years ago, 10 years ago, 50 years ago. I want you to return. I want you to return in the clouds and set this world new. This is the return we want. That we be intimate. That we can be with the Father as He created us to. Thank you, Yeshua, that He provided us a way on the tree. See, it's not about works. It's not about works at all. Are you a doer of the Word or are you a hearer only? You hear me speaking. You hear preachers speaking. Sukkot, Sukkot, Shabbat, Shabbat. But let's get real. Are you a hearer? You heard the Word. This is the Word of God. Now, it's our choice. Are you going to do it? Are you going to keep Shabbat? Are you going to keep my face? Are you going to come be intimate with me on the days that I'm going to show up in a magnificent way like you've never seen before? And this is His heart's desire that He can show you on this earth. I'm going to give you a taste of the kingdom. This is what it's going to be like. You don't have to worry about nothing in the world. This is what it's going to be like in the kingdom. In Sukkot, we get to rejoice and we get to fellowship for a whole week. And we get to see people loving on each other for a whole week. And we get to see everybody rejoicing and talking about the Lord and sharing their experiences. This is Sukkot. God coming in our midst. It's awesome. It's awesome. Are you going to show up? Do you want to know what the kingdom of heaven is like? Or do you just want to imagine what it's going to be like? And this is the whole purpose of the Moedim, His appointed festivals. And when we don't, there's consequences. There's consequences. You'll be cut off from His people. That's what the Bible says. I read it. I didn't interpret it. I just read it. How serious are we about the things that are committed to us? How can we change the world? Yeshua took 12 and changed the world. But he took 12 that was solely committed, that were sold out for Him, that were willing to die, to walk as He walked. Are we ready? Because time is short. There's people out there wanting to know wanting to know. Their hearts and spirits are aching to know something greater. But can, can we as believers give it to them? So you can't give them something you don't have. And if you're not walking as He walked, you don't have Him to give it. If you don't walk as He walked, you don't have it to give it to them. Serious. But God is so awesome. And that's why atonement's, I don't know, atonement's starting to take a lead here. When I think atonement, that blood thrown on the altar, and Yeshua going before the Father and making intercession for me. Are we going to walk as He walked? Because Yeshua did it. He said, you got Jesus in you? He said, a servant is not above his master. He said, if you're persecuted, don't worry because you're persecuted. If they persecute you. They're not persecuting you. They're persecuting me first. They're not persecuting you. They're persecuting me. When you keep my commands, my judgments, my statutes, you keep my Moedim, you're showing them who I am. So they're not persecuting you, they're persecuting me. And he takes it very seriously because he said, I will not let my people be ashamed. I will not let my people be ashamed. 
Yeshua. Yeshua, Yeshua, Yeshua. He's awesome and He reveals Himself to us in His Word. He says, do not take away and do not add to. Are we lukewarm? Have we ever looked at ourselves and said, I'm lukewarm? But repent, teshuva, means to do it His way. It's to do it His way. And me, I don't want to be cut off from His people. I don't want to be the goat that comes before the Father. And He says, depart from me, you who didn't follow my Torah. You worker of lawlessness. It's serious. But that doesn't mean we can't be joyful and grateful and laugh and joke and have a good time in the Lord. And that's what He's called us to do. And when you go to His Moedim and the bridegroom comes into the chamber, which is the sukkah, then we get to laugh and have joy and peace and be intimate with Him. The Moedim. Amen? Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank You and we praise You. Father, our hearts yearn for You. Father, and as we open up our Word, and Your Word stung, Your Word's cut, but Father, that sword that You will, it cuts to destroy, but it also cuts to heal, Father. And those wounds that have, have been cut, Father, we just ask that You heal them. Because in Your Word it says a seed must die before it can be resurrected, Father. And all that flesh and all that pride and that spirit that is in us that is not of You, Father, we ask that You kill it, that we may be resurrected in Your likeness for Your glory, for Your glory. Father, we just want Your glory, nothing else. Because it says You don't do this for our sakes, Father. You said You do it for Your name's sake, that Your name may be glorified in all the heaven and in all the earth. Father, we just thank You in Yeshua's name.